Hi guys, it's Amy with Feel Better with Yoga. For deciding for yourself to join me and do a little practice today. Today is, uh, this is my first video since the big coronavirus uh, crisis that's going on. Since coronavirus came, became a word in our daily vocabulary. I know that your lives are really upside down right now. Mine is too. And I know that as weird as it is for me, my life hasn't changed nearly as much as so many other people. So um, I'm glad that you took this time to decide to do something positive for yourself today while all this, while I, with everything that's going on. So come to a seated position, whatever is comfortable. It might be like this, it might not be. Maybe you're most comfortable with your legs sticking out or you get some towels or blankets under your bottom to sit on for these first few minutes while we're sitting whatever makes you comfortable. And then we'll sit up tall and close your eyes. And for this first few minutes, I'm not doing anything. So you can watch me or you don't have to. And take a deep breath in and sigh it out. And take another breath, just like that. Feel yourself fill up with all the air and oxygen that nourishes your body. And sigh that out too. And now we're going to let ourselves switch over from that mode of doing that we're in all the time, all of our lives, but especially now, worrying about the virus, worrying about if we're going to get paid, worrying about all these things, how to, what to do with our kids while they're home from school. We're going to let go of all of that and switch over into a mode of non-doing, which is just one of being, just being present with what's going on right now. So we do start to become present by noticing everything that we can actively, in this moment, sense. So think of your senses, everything that you can hear when you open your eyes, what you can see, what you can feel is the big one, and even what you can taste or smell. So right now, notice what you can hear that's happening right now around you. You hear the sounds coming out of the video. You hear my voice. I hear, I don't know what's picking up, I hear cars going by, I hear lots of different types of birds singing, I heard a dog barking, I hear my own breath coming in and out. So whatever you're hearing, let all that blend together in this beautiful symphony of sound, not trying to ignore any of, any of it, just being with all of it. When we open our eyes, You'll notice what you can see right now. Even with my eyes closed, I notice the sun just came out from behind the clouds. And I can see my eyelids glowing orange. And now notice everything that you can feel in your body. Notice how tall you're sitting up. As though the top of your head is lifting you up gently higher up towards the sky, putting some extra length in your spine Giving a little extra cushion. Track yourself from the top of your head down your spine all the way into your bottom and feel the bones in your bottom and the muscles of your bottom pulling down into the ground or whatever's beneath you. Feel where your legs or feet, heels, ankles are pressing. Feel those pressure points against the ground. I can wiggle my toes and feel the stickiness of the mat underneath me. If you've got socks or shoes on, feel the fabric of your shoes or socks. Notice all of that as a whole, and then bring your focus to your breath. Just notice it. We're not trying to change or manipulate our breath in any way. We're just breathing as we always would, noticing that. We are silent observers without judgment, or criticism, or wishing things were otherwise. Now, as we practice, we're going to bring an intention into our mind, an intention of being present throughout the practice. An intention is not something to check off your list or a goal to reach. 
an intention is a quality of being that you want to feel more of right now in this moment. Maybe it's feeling more at peace or calm. Maybe it's feeling patient. Maybe it's wanting strength to get through everything that lies ahead. Whatever it is, it's already in you, but we manifest it by bringing it to our focus. Imagine every breath of air you take in, breathing in that intention along with oxygen, your heart beating and sending the oxygen and that quality of being throughout your body until you are nothing but this intention contained by the physical shape of you. Thich Nhat Harn said, I have arrived. I am home in the now. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate, I dwell. What a loving place to be. So take one last breath here in stillness. And as you exhale, turn your head over to one side. If you opened your eyes, you could look at your shoulder or maybe the room beside you. Take a couple of breaths here, just feeling that stretch in the muscle below the ear and at the bottom of the jaw, running down your neck where it attaches to your clavicle, your collarbone right there. It might feel like a big stretch. It might feel like nothing at all. Exhale, bring your head back to neutral and then take it over to the other side. Big stretch there. See, the other side I felt nothing. This side is tight. I got a big stretch there, so I'm going to be a little more gentle with it, but also feel it. One more breath. Bring your head back to facing straight ahead. Now carefully let your head drop back. So if you opened your eyes, you might see the ceiling or at least more up. And then nobody can see you right now, so I challenge you to open your mouth. Let it just hang so you're not using all those muscles to keep your jaw shut. And if you open your mouth, notice how much more open your throat feels and how much bigger and fuller your breath feels coming in and out. It's even making me talk funny. Exhale gently, bring your head back to neutral. Let your head fall forward. Ouch, creaky neck. That's what I'm feeling, tight and crunchy. You can hold your head still or rock it side to side. Do what your neck is wanting and needing you to do. And breathe. With your next breath, pick your head back up to neutral. Let's come into some shoulder and arm warming up. We're going to pretend we're swimming. So inhale, bring one arm all the way back behind you. Reach it up. Exhale it down to your lap. And then other arm out and up. Exhale forward and down. Keep that moving. And imagine you're in water. And you're making huge waves as your arm moves through the water. And I think it's such a cool thing that air and water cannot exist in the same place as our bodies. So every time you move, and you can see this when you're in the water, the water has to get out of the way and move for you. That is the power of our physical bodies. We move and air and water have to get out of the way. So as you do this, you can't see it, but imagine the air moving out of the way for you, just like water does. You're making big waves and ripples in the air. Notice where you feel this, under your arm, maybe all the way down your rib cage into your waist. One more arm. Exhale it down. Okay, sit up tall. Shake out your shoulders a little bit. Let's bring one arm, doesn't matter which one, out to the side, palm forward, make your fingers big, wiggle them a little bit. We're going to take a breath in. Exhale that arm all the way across the body, big reach, and then inhale, pull it back open. Keep that going as you breathe. Let your breath guide you. Your breath is moving your arm. Notice where you feel this. You might feel it just through the shoulder and arm, maybe in the chest a little bit. I'm feeling it all the way down my rib cage and even in this side of my ribs. 
one more across and open now flip that palm up to the ceiling and as you inhale pick that arm all the way up reach stretch straight up or maybe even over a little bit this other arm relaxes on the floor next to you to give yourself more support better balance and breathe no pose has to be held and be really, really still. Do what feels right. I'm a bit of a wiggler and bouncer in poses. It feels good to me to wiggle and bounce and find where the stretch is. So you don't have to do that. That's just what I do. Okay, exhale, take that arm all the way down. Let it float back to the ground, rest it, and then bring the other arm out. Palm forward, fingers wide. Breathe in, big breath. Exhale everything out, arm across the body, inhale, pull it back open. A few more times like that. I just heard my neck pop, but in a good way, like it needed to do that. And now I hear my stomach growling. So notice all those things that are happening in your body. I hear another plane going by overhead. That's, that's neat because the flights have changed so much. Didn't think I'd hear that today. One more across. Inhale, pull it open, and then flip the palm. Breathe in, big sweeping movement. Exhale, big stretch from my elbow all the way down to this hip. And at the same time, I can tune back in to what I'm feeling underneath me letting my hips and thighs relax and feeling my bottom and my ankles pressing into the hard ground. Ooh, wind blowing, that feels good. We're filming in Houston where I live and it is a hot, muggy, overcast day. But somehow, even though it's cloudy, it is still gl glaringly hazy and bright, even with my eyes closed. Okay, sit up tall, take that arm back down. Good. Inhale, bring both arms all the way up to the ceiling, reach. Exhale, little twist through the waist. Open the arms wide and soft, and then breathe in. Face forward, arms lift up. Exhale to the other side. Again, just like you're in the water. And you feel the resistance of the air against the skin of your arms. Not as much as water, but it's still there. One more to the side. Sit up tall, breathe in. Exhale, let your arms relax down into your lap. Now we're going to bring our hands together behind our back and clasp your fingers down so you can see me. Clasp your hands together and long, straight or bent arms, doesn't really matter. Press your fists against your uh, tailbone, tailbone, I guess, and then pull the shoulders and chest back. If it feels good, you can even uh, let your head fall back as you're doing this big stretch. But you feel how open your chest is. Visualize your heart inside, pulling forward, trying to reach the light of the sun. In everything we do in life and in yoga, the heart tends to lead us, it guides us. Exhale, relax all that first, then undo your hands and fingers. Bring your arms out in front of you, clasp fingers together again. Got hair in my mouth, sorry. Fingers clasped together and we're going to invert them. If that doesn't feel great for some reason, just keep it like this. But if you invert them, feel that big stretch through the palms and through the fingers, the webbing of the fingers, and then push from the shoulders far away from you and you feel that huge opening through your upper back, shoulder blades widening even farther away from each other. Take a couple of breaths. One more breath. Exhale, relax all of that. Undo your arms, shake all that out. Okay, now we're gonna come up onto our hands and knees. If you've got any kind of knee issues, pause. Go get a blanket or a towel, roll it up padding, give your knees some cushion, self-care. Always, don't sit there on a hard ground and hurt, like I'm about to do because I forgot to bring props out or blankets out. Okay, come on to hands and knees. 
This is tabletop or hands and knees. And when you come into it, just come into it really loose and light and just spend a couple of breaths just rocking a little bit. Hips to one side and then to the other. You might feel some stretch in the hip and in the inner thighs, loosening up the lower back a little bit. Okay, bring the hips back to center. We're going to come into arching and rounding, also known as cow and cat. I always find that a little confusing, so I just say arching and rounding because it's more obvious. As you inhale, face up, chest up, heart pulling towards the front of your mat somewhere, and you can let the arch in your lower back deepen a little bit to where it feels okay. Don't strain it. If that doesn't feel good, then don't arch much. Exhale, round, curl up in a ball, shoulder blades, pushing up to the ceiling, and then keep that moving. Breathe your way in and out of this. Breath is always moving us. The movement doesn't determine our breath. Our breath determines our movement. Feel your knees and feet, palms and fingertips pressing into the ground. One more. Okay, come back into a neutral spine. Walk your hands a little farther away from you. And let's rock forward and back as we breathe. Just getting some blood flowing more in the shoulders, in the chest. Inhale, opening up the fronts of the thighs. Big stretch there. Exhale, push back. Long spine, feel the stretch in the hips. If there's anything that I say that you might feel that you don't feel, don't worry about it. We've all got different bodies and feel things differently. I'm calling out where I'm feeling it. One more. Okay, come back up to hands and knees. We're going to curl the toes under and come up into a downward facing dog. But before we do, I don't have blocks out here, but I want to encourage you to adjust however you need. So downward facing dog, we curl the toes under, lift our bottoms up, walk the feet back. If you get into this and it just doesn't feel good, then be sure to adjust it. So that might be bringing your hands up onto blocks, or you can even do it in your living room on the coffee table. It's all downward facing dog in the way that feels best to your body. Once you get to wherever you are, walk your feet, march your knees in place. Notice what you feel. I've got tight calves, tight hamstrings. My back is going, ho. Oh. Take one more breath here. Okay, bring your knees carefully back down to the floor. And let's step one foot out in front of us. It might go straight through. You might need to bring it around. It doesn't matter. Let's just get the foot forward. Hands on the knees. Come up tall and sink down into kneeling lunge, also called kneeling crescent. And this is a place where we feel like we, ha we have the need to stretch and push. We don't need to. Just relax into it. And we go to wherever our legs naturally say, hey, that's enough. Stop. And we breathe into that. One more breath. Okay. Exhale. Hands to the floor or, again, I like to use blocks right here so my chest is lifted up a little bit more. We're going to shift back. Rock back on the heel. We'll flex the foot back. Ah, hello, calves and hamstring talking to me, saying, we haven't done this in a few days. Here, people tend to think you need to keep the legs straight. I don't really ever like to keep my knees straight. I keep a soft little bend in there, and you can play with it straight or bending. For me, I find that with a bend, I get a whole lot more stretch in the hamstring, even up into my backside. And again, Wiggle, rock in it, see where, the, where it feels good. Flex the foot. Okay, now let's go forward and back into the lunge and back into this hamstring stretch. Move your hands wherever you need them to go. Exhale, push back.
Hey, one more. Okay, relax everything. Bring that front leg back down to the ground, or actually I like to kick it around a little bit before I put it down. Okay, other leg. Forward straight through or get it in front of you. That kneeling lunge. Again, other leg. A lot of stuff that feels really tight, there's a difference. A lot of our muscles are tight because we use them a lot. And sometimes they get tight because we don't use them, we don't stretch them. Muscle tightness can be stretched. That's what we're doing. But muscle tension cannot be stretched. It can only release when we feel safe. And we get there through breathing and being mindful and letting go of all the worries of life. My restorative yoga teacher, Jillian Pransky, always preaches this in her classes, in her, the things she writes, when she speaks publicly, in her teaching. Um, so part of it is getting that physical stretch and part of it is just calming and releasing and finding where we're holding tension and then being able to sort of just let it soften, let it go. Okay, shift back, stretch out that front leg, flex the foot back. Ay, 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 wow. Uh, these few days sitting on the computer staring at coronavirus updates has made my bottom half really, really tight. One more breath. Okay, forward and back again. A few more breaths, forward and back. One more. And then we'll bring this front leg back again to the floor, knee to the floor. So take it back, drag it, kick it around a little bit, ooh, and put the knee down. Now let's come back into your downward facing dog, whatever that looked like before. Hands on the floor or on blocks if you have them, or even the coffee table. If you're really tight, put your hands on the kitchen counter. Do downward dog that way. Lift up, walk your feet back. And notice here, maybe this time around, you actually feel a little bit looser than you did the first time around. Maybe downward dog isn't as difficult as it was the first time, because we've stretched a little bit now. One more breath. Okay, bend the knees a lot and walk your feet as many steps as it takes up to your hands, up near the top of your mat. Mindful of your back, all of us have back problems. Maybe put your hands on your thighs and with a straight back, use your arms to press up to standing. This is mountain pose, or what I fondly call, it looks like we're just standing here, but it's more than that. Feet as wide, as, as wide apart as your hips, it's frequently taught feet together, you can do that. I feel like there's more balance when we have feet apart, and also to me, I feel stronger. I feel wider and bigger, and I like that feeling of my own strength. So raise your toes up off the ground just for a second. Feel all four corners of your foot pressing into the ground, and then let your toes fall back into the floor. Feel the padding of each toe gripping whatever's beneath you. Palms forward, fingers wide, shoulders back and down. So all at once, it's sort of a relaxed stance, it's also very active. Imagine you're standing on an airplane or a boat or a surfboard and you're trying to brace so that you don't fall down. Again, feel this whole shape of your body, this beautiful physical shape of you that houses and contains the rest of you, the part of you that your physical body can't even begin to describe. All the things that people who love you say about you, feel that in this moment. Take one more breath here. Okay, now we'll move in and out of mountain pose a few times with our breath. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up, hands touch. And as you exhale, bring hands to heart and fold forward. Fingertips come to the floor into forward fold. 
Well, if you've got a touchy back or you're really tight here, it's difficult for us. I couldn't do this when I first started yoga. So I bend my knees. If you've got a touchy back, you might even, this might be your forward fold and that's okay. We are still folding forward, strengthening the back. So enough lecture on that. Inhale, sweep back up. Exhale, forward fold to where your body wants to go. And keep that moving. Every inhale, lifting, making you tall, energized. Exhale, fold, softening, releasing to the ground. Yoga is so much about the opposites in life. We inhale and we exhale. We grow tall and strong and we are able to release and ground. We work and think and then we sleep. We stretch and we strengthen. All of our life in this polarity. One more breath up and down. Exhale, down. Okay, rise up. We're going to bring our arms and upper body up and then put a little bit of bend into the knees. Chair pose. Bend your knees however much you want. It might be right here. You might be like, oh, I love doing this. I'm going to go really deep. Knock yourself out. Whatever feels good to you. Don't try to do what I'm doing or think you need to do different. Arms can be real. Make them super strong and make muscles. Feel your heels digging into the floor beneath you. Maybe your thighs are starting to shake. Haha, <laughs> mine are too. So that's normal. That's okay. One more breath and we're going to come into warrior one. Standing on the right leg. So we'll step the left foot back. And that's the one step way to do it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe just stand here, get your left foot back. And then come into it. That's okay. We want the back foot angled, not out to the side, but more towards at, an, at a 45 degree angle or so. Why? Not for, because it's pretty. It's better for the knee. We're turning everything to face mostly forward, matching the shoulders. Then we bring the arms up. Exhale, put however much bend you want into the front knee while keeping this foot more towards the front. Again, feel this whole of you. Strong and tall and wide, fingers wide, air on your skin, feet pressing into the ground, anchoring you where you are. One more breath. Exhale, fold forward just a little bit, bring the arms back. We're coming into this long straight line down the back, down the leg, and then breathe yourself back up. And exhale forward like a tall, soft tree blowing in the wind. One more breath in, exhale forward, and then we'll rise back up, breathe in, exhale, open to the side, coming into warrior two. And all we've done is turned this foot, this back foot from this angle to now straight ahead, toes pointing towards the long side of your mat. <clears throat> we'll scoot the right foot forward a little bit so the heel could line up with the arch of the other foot. And then exhale, sink a little bit. Remember that reading, I have arrived. I am home. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate, I dwell. What a loving place to be. Feel yourself here, breathing and taking care of yourself, taking this time out of your stressful day to love yourself this way, in a way that no one else can do for you. One more breath. <clears throat> okay, tip back into reverse warrior. This arm can just relax down by your thigh. If you want a little more feeling of openness in the chest, you can reach back and grab your hamstring. Don't have to. You feel how open you are across here. Again, heart pulling straight ahead of you, leading and guiding. One more breath. 
exhale back into warrior two tip over to this knee extended side angle this hand can rest on the on the thigh you can go lower as long as your chest doesn't start to fold forward because the goal isn't to get the elbow down the goal is to be upright in one plane so that might be hand on the knee other arm reaching for the sky Exhale, come back into warrior two, straighten the leg, reverse triangle, or again, what I call affectionately, reverse standing here. One more breath. Exhale, back to standing, reach over to the right side, or whatever this side is, <clears throat> with those fingertips, and this arm comes up, bottom arm comes down to rest anywhere on your leg where it goes. The goal isn't to get lower, get the hand lower, because if I reach lower, I start to fold forward. That's not the goal. The goal is, again, is to be in this one plane. So I'm perfect keeping my hand right here on my thigh. Huge stretch from the fingertips all the way down the arm, down the side body, into the foot. Okay, exhale, rise back up. Use your hands to help push you back up to standing. Turn this foot, <coughs> excuse me, to face straight ahead. <coughs> you can even sort of pigeon toe the feet a little bit, which helps open the lower back a little bit better. Fold forward, we're gonna bring our hands to the floor. That feels like a big free fall, so bring your hands down. If that's too much on lower back, bend your knees, hold onto the thighs and get down that way. And you might even go again, maybe to a coffee table or blocks or whatever, so you're not quite as low. <clears throat> Be where it's safe and healthy for your body. Hold still or bend your knees and rock a little bit. One more breath. Okay. Raise your chest up a little bit. Walk your feet a little closer together. Bent legs, hands on thighs to help your back. And mindfully press up to standing so you don't hurt your back. Okay, whole thing again, other side. So pivot to the back side of your mat or back, back of the room, wherever you were. <clears throat> As we turn, you'll notice if you look back here, this, your feet are probably now in a straight line. We don't want them to be. And this foot's probably turned out. So we're gonna pivot it as though it's a door. We're gonna slam the door, get that foot facing straight ahead, and bring our feet out of that straight line, giving some distance between our feet, or some width. And then find warrior one again. Exhale, bend the knees, sink down. Feel that breath coming in, filling you up. Oxygen and intention. What was your intention? One more breath. Exhale, fold forward slightly. Hands come to, arms come to line up with the back leg. If your back is touchy, bring hands here to support yourself. Always watch out for your back. Inhale, exhale forward. One more, up and down. Okay, come back up and open again, warrior two, facing this same, same way you faced before. Scoot the bent knee foot forward a little bit to line up with the arch of the other foot. And then breathe in, <sighs> exhale, sink down. <clears throat> And I always try to remind people in class when I'm teaching, sink does not mean go lower. Sink is a feeling of release and melting, feeling yourself getting deeper into the ground. Chest open, heart looking for the sun in the sky. Another airplane. 
airplane. That's a tiny one. Do you hear that? Okay. Tip over. Reverse warrior. Hand. This arm relaxed or pull it back to the hamstring. Open chest. And this top arm, maybe ever so slightly, this much, pull it back behind you. We don't want to get the arm behind us, but we're just feeling how open this is. Like we're throwing our arms open to everything. One more breath. Exhale. Back to warrior two. Tip over, extended side angle. Hand on the thigh. Other arm reaches up. Oh, the sun just came out. Breathe. One more breath. Push back up to standing. Straighten that bent leg. Tip back. Reverse. Just standing here. One more breath. Okay. Back to standing. And now triangle. Lean over a little bit with these fingers. Bring them down to the leg wherever they go. Other arm up. Again, feel that polarity. This arm tall and reaching and light. Everything else rooted in the, into the ground. <clears throat> and then you feel it's like a tug of war. You feel it across your body as though your collarbones are pulling away from each other. One more breath. Okay, push back up to standing. Relax all that. Bring your feet a little closer together, or a lot closer together. We're going to come down onto the floor. <clears throat> go sideways on your mat like I am right now, so that we're going to go down onto our knees with wide knees, and we want our knees on top of something soft. This is not very soft. Um, so come down, hands and knees, but then start to creep your knees wider apart. to support you. Frog pose. So what we're making is like frog legs. And then find where the stretch feels best for you. Forward or back. You feel it a lot in the hips, inner thighs. Trying to keep the back pretty straight. One more breath. Okay. Bear your weight in your arms and elbows, or even hands, and gently start to bring the knees a little closer together. That was a big stretch. Maybe shake them out a little bit if you need to. And then we're going to come onto our backs. <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat a lot because it is pollen season in Texas. <clears throat> and in Houston, and I get it all right here. Okay. Lie down on your back. And let's hug the knees into the chest. Oops. I'm on a slant. I'm rolling. Whatever way feels good. We're not straining. Rock on your back a little bit. Okay, we'll come into happy baby. So let your knees stay go wide. You can keep holding on to your knees, but even better, if you can, reach through and grab ankles or feet or your first two fingers wrapped around your toes and then take your feet wider apart, just like a baby who's just discovered their feet for the first time. And rock on your back. You can play with making one leg more straight and then the other one st straight-ish. Kicking your legs around. <clears throat> One more breath. Okay, bring the feet back together. Take them down to the floor. And now thread the needle. We're going to stretch out the hip a little bit. Cross one ankle on top of the other thigh. Make sure the ankle bone is there. If that already is enough, just step up this thigh. 
reach through and around to hold the thigh that's not crossed as though you're going to hug your knees into your chest but you just got the one leg the goal what you want to feel is the stretch in the hip of the crossed leg wherever you find that stretch that's where you need to be you don't need to go any farther this leg can go up straight it can be a little bent it can just dangle this is what i like the best Take several breaths there. Imagine you're sending all that air right into that tight hip, warming it, softening it, getting it to let go. One more breath. Okay, carefully set down the bottom leg and then help the other leg uncross. And switch, other leg crosses over reach through between your legs and around the other side so we're just hugging this bottom thigh towards our chest let everything in your body relax into the ground your head shoulders down away from your ears the legs are relaxed now only using the strength of the arms we hug that leg in a little bit so we're not straining and, and groaning trying to get the thighs stretched they will passively naturally stretch just by holding on with the arms One more breath, and gently let down the bottom leg, help the top leg uncross. Throw your arms out wide and loose, rock both knees to one side. They can stay there and later switch to the other side, or you can just rock on your back, knees to one side, then to the other. One more breath. Okay, knees back to center. And either let your hands rest on your tummy, throw them out to the side, whatever feels good, and we're going to rest. And you may have heard this called Shavasana, uh, also called Corpse Pose. It's resting. I always call it Resting Pose. So when I teach in my studio, I, put, I have bolsters I put under the legs so they can really relax and let the lower back soften and relax so while you're at home if you don't have bolsters I don't even have bolsters at home get a couch cushion get bed pillows anything to let your knee rest your legs rest in them and if you don't have anything just keep your knees bent close your eyes lie here and breathe and the next time you do this practice remember maybe to set up beforehand with some blankets with some pillows some things to help you make this practice a little more comfortable for you. And now as you lie here, feel all the work that your body just did. And now feel all of that work draining out of you and feel the opposite flooding through you, that feeling of rest. Muscles letting go. Feel where the ground how strong it is, how it, how it rises up to hold on to you. You feel the back of your head pressing into the floor or a pillow, whatever you, whatever you have. Let your face relax and your jaw be slack. Shoulders roll back and down and find the floor. Our spine is able to be long and relaxed. Discs able to relax now that we're not sitting or standing and having so much pressure and compression on the discs. You feel your bottom or your pelvis pulling down into the ground. Let your legs feel loose and soft. Notice where your feet come into contact with the ground and feel your heels pulling down. Feel whatever's beneath your feet. Bring your intention that you set back into your mind. Feel it and know that that quality is you. We just forget. Whether it's patience or strength or peace, bringing it to our minds and breathing. 
we manifest it and allow ourselves to be exactly that. By breathing, becoming more mindful and present, we allow our bodies to pull out, and our minds to pull out of that doing and thinking mode that we're in all the time. That's the thing that keeps us awake at night. That's the thing that makes us clench our jaws or run to the phone or run to the computer looking for distraction. And we can we create more space between our thoughts. And ironically, through movement of the practice, we enable ourselves to find stillness of mind. It's a great gift to give yourself every time you practice. If you'd like to lie here longer, some music on, pause the video, lay here as long as you want, and then you can continue as we sit up. If you're done, let's roll over. It's best to kind of roll over to your side a little bit, put your hand into the floor. Ooh, I got my, my gadget under me. Use your hands and the strength of your arms to push you back up to standing. Let your head hang. Get yourself comfortable. Back to seated. Take a breath in, let that out. Notice how your body feels now compared to before you started. Maybe, hopefully you feel a little bit more energized yet also relaxed all at the same time. Thich Nhat Hanh also said, at any moment you have a choice that either leads you closer to your spirit or further away from it. And you made the choice today to do something for yourself that brings who you are underneath all your worries, underneath coronavirus and working at home or being laid off or sending, spending time at home, having your kids home, all those things. You made a choice to bring yourself closer to your spirit and not further away from it. That's huge. Acknowledge yourself for that, for this time you gave yourself today. Now take one last breath for yourself before you go back into your life. Let it out. Bring your hands together at your heart. We close yoga with the word namaste, which simply means, and it's not religious in any way, it simply means the light that is in me honors and shines on the light that is in you. So I thank you for spending this time with me today. And I hope you'll come back and watch more. Namaste.